Hey guys, this is Pastor Scott, and I'm just going to talk plainly with you for a moment regarding a testimony that my wife said that we should share. So as I like to tell you guys, pray and hit the share button. I'll do that first, so hold on one second. Going to one accord, lunch with the Bible of friends, our bros that meet we at the altar. And Jesus is God. So, yeah, this is Pastor Scott. I just want to read a scripture and then share a wonderful story that we heard yesterday at the park from Lunch with the Bible and Friends. And uh, St. Luke chapter 10, verse 30 says this, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and they departed him, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when they saw him, he passed by the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And when he went to him, he bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his beast, and brought him to the inn and took care of him. And when on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave it to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three do you think thou was the neighbor unto them that fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy upon him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. So yeah, so yesterday, um, as we were finishing up the uh, Lunch with the Bible and Friends, after the raffle, or after the service, we usually turn the camera off for you guys, and then um, we uh, circle up, we have a raffle, we give out the gifts, because generally there's uh, more people than we have uh, gifts available, and we also want to just have some fun and make it exciting for them, so we raffle off different things that they might need like um, toiletries and gloves and flashlights and fun stuff like that that the people on the street might uh, need, and they get the opportunity to do that. And after that, we circle up for a prayer circle um, together as friends. And right before we got to praying, um, one of the Spanish ladies, Nellie, had shared with us a testimony that I want to share with you. And uh, let me just, Lord Jesus, speak to your people Help me to do this, get this out the way you want it, to touch their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, I want to keep this fairly short. So she had let us know that there was a Spanish gentleman there that shared his testimony with her that um, uh, some years ago, he used to be uh, on drugs and alcohol himself. And he used to stay under the freeway overpass. He had just prayed for the brother, brothers and sisters that stay under the freeway overpass. And then... Um, and uh, she said, well, you have to hear his story. And he, I guess he was uh, on drugs and drinking and staying under the overpass. Um, and uh, apparently at one of the outreaches that we had, either Tuesday or Sunday, he had uh, received Jesus. Uh, when the altar call was given, we give everybody the opportunity to come to Christ. And, you know, that's the reason why we do what we do, to give them the opportunity. Um, and he said yes. And immediately uh, things started to change. Uh, from there, he went back to the freeway overpass. And as he was uh, walking or sitting down, something like that, um, it was Christmas Eve. And he was sitting there and he stumbled across a Bible, which he still has to this day. And it was open to Psalm 91. And uh, that blew him away, and he took that as a sign for God. He just said yes to Jesus and, uh, you know, said the prayer, just the basic uh, Romans 10 uh, uh, prayer, uh, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Um, said that prayer with us and then uh, got back to his place of uh, residence under the freeway overpass and found a Bible, um, open to Psalm uh, 91, and uh that he took as a sign, like I said. And then I guess after that, he he was uh, getting some stuff together or maybe uh, uh, come, coming to try to go to sleep. He, he found $150. And after he found that, he went down to Walmart right around the corner over there in Anaheim and uh, spent probably about 50% of it on some food for some of the other uh, people that lived underneath the freeway over, uh, underpass. And then... Uh, went over to Home Depot and bought some things that they might need, like, uh, uh, you know, tarps and, and uh, maybe some sheets or blankets or things of that nature, and he brought it back. 
uh, to them. So he shared uh, the majority of that money with others. And then uh, from what I understand, uh, he's clean and sober now. He has, uh, he's renting a room somewhere. He has a job. He wants to be used by God. And I think he's probably in his 20s or 30s. He's a young kid um, as far as uh, in comparison to us. And uh, it's just a wonderful story of how, how the homeless are helping the homeless. Like, you know, we might think that it's not right to give them money or to help them out. And, and I often wondered, all the Bibles, I mean, I say this not to brag, but uh, when Lifeway Christian Bookstore was uh, open here in Brea, we used to buy so many Bibles. Um, I asked them one time, how many? And they said it was thousands. I didn't even know. We just kept ordering and reordering and reordering. And I just asked them, is there anyone else that buys Bibles uh, at this at this rate? And they said, no. Um, we were the, the, the ones that bought the most Bibles. We just give them out. We just give them out. Like I said, I say that not to brag, but just... After doing it for so much, so many times, I just don't know if it makes a difference. You know, are they throwing them away or just leaving them or do they get lost? But with this story from this Spanish gentleman, even Spanish, and we're English. We have uh, at the park, we have uh, English and we have uh, a lady named Nelly or Giorgio that translates in Spanish. Uh, so we do a bilingual service to the best of our ability right there at La Palma Park, 2.30 every Sunday, rain or shine. And if it looks like it's going to rain, we just pray it away. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the Bibles could have been ours, could have been yours. Who knows? Was open to Psalm 91. He just said yes to Jesus. He took it as a sign. He started doing good now. He has a job, a place to stay, and he's coming every Sunday uh, blessing the other brothers. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Get out there. Do good. Um, whatever it is, I mean, just love on the people. It's love that covers a multitude of sin. It's love that draws people to repentance. And, um, yeah, we just love you guys. If you need anything at all, give us a call at one 70 jesus one 70 jesus And perhaps you're watching right now and you don't know this Jesus. You don't, you know, you've been saying no. You've been uh, rejecting him like I did for most of my life. And you want to come to Christ today. Well, let's just make it real simple right now. So Lord Jesus, if there's anybody on here watching right now and they want to come to you, I ask that you... Help them to make that decision right now, that they will turn to you in their heart right now at this moment. For Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So Lord, if that's you or any of these people that are watching right now or later, make that choice. Confess Jesus. Just say, Jesus, right now, you are my Lord. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins on the third day. And just uh, get into a Bible-believing church, man. Get into his word. Anything you can do, go be of service. And uh, if you have any questions at all, give us a call at 1-855-70-JESUS.